What's up, everybody? This is the Coach Fitz Podcast, and it's time for the Weekly Drive. (sighs) Okay, so, quick little update. I just picked up the protein powder for the... That's going to start happening a lot. Sorry for anybody who is tuning in online. <laughs> that stinks. Okay, sorry for anybody who's actually watching this on YouTube. There's going to be a lot of droppage here. Okay, the camera's going to drop a little bit because my mount for my car really, really blows lately. So, had to get another one. What you going to do? Um, but back to the update. So, just got some protein powder. Oh, hold on, turn, don't fall. <laughs> okay, the powder, now, lately, as I've gotten into the later years of the 20s, okay, early on, like in college and like around the, like 21, 22, I could pretty much drink any type of protein shake and be completely fine, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my body's like, yeah, whey and casein are not your thing. So, got to adapt, adjust, okay? Instead of ditching the protein shakes altogether, because they are super freaking convenient, and I like having them just on hand in a pinch, uh, I found one that is not dairy-based, okay? There are many, many options that do not involve casein or, uh, or whey, okay? When it comes to protein... There's plenty of options. I mean, most people, when they think no no uh, milk products, it's like, oh, just get a vegan one. That's an option, okay? If you don't mind the gritty taste and the general overall shittiness of them. Now, don't get me wrong, there are good ones out there, but in my experience, most of them are not that great. And on top of that, when you go vegan or vegetarian and you get the sources from rice protein from pea protein pumpkin protein yes you are getting a whole protein which is good but the concentration of those essential amino acids is nowhere near meat or dairy products it's just a fact i mean the vegans and vegetarians can argue all they want till they're blue in the face but it is what it is the amino acid profile is good on paper and bad in numbers Okay, if that makes any sense. So I went with an animal protein based one. Okay, it's literally just, it, at least the label says, it's literally just salmon, chicken, beef, all ground it up. And it's got a little hint of like creamer, which just seems to be like just enough for my stomach to be able to handle it, no problem. Maybe it's like a volume thing, I can handle a little bit. I don't know. Okay, it's all trial and error, really, when it comes to nutrition and all this stuff. So, the one I go with is MRE. Okay, for those of you watching, it's this one. Okay, for anyone who is not watching, okay, MRE light. Okay, the light one is a little bit lower on the calories. The regular MRE is pretty much like a meal replacement, so it's a little higher on the calories, but does the job. Okay, the MRE light is like a traditional kind of like low-calorie, high-protein protein shake now it's kind of like for anybody who was in like interested in the fitness arena back in like early 2000s 2010 ish there was a guy named rich piana he owned a company called five percent nutrition and they made this stuff and i'm pretty sure it was literally labeled real food (laughs) It was literally just real food blended up, and it tasted like a shake. So, probably not the tastiest thing in the world, but it did the job. Now, the guys at Redcon, I guess, took that up a notch and actually made it taste freaking good. I mean, I was very, very surprised. I'm used to, like, there's this carnivore brand that you see at, like, GNC and Vitamin Shop, and it tastes like garbage. Like, if, if you... uh need something I mean it does the job and it if you're sensitive to dairy then yes it's a good option but it's just on the taste scale god it's nowhere near this stuff so I was pleasantly pleasantly surprised okay well coming around
around another turn. Here we go. <laughs> okay, but not to go off on a protein tangent, but that's pretty much the whole reasoning behind that purchase. Now, the other thing I purchased there was a Sour Patch or Sour Heads. I don't think they have like the right to say Sour Patch. Sour Heads Ghost Energy Drink. Okay, for those of you that like the energy drink reviews, I am hyped for this one. I had the red one and it was the top of my list. Like by far best energy drink I've ever had in my life. But I I say that with the disclaimer that I love uh, sour stuff. If you don't like sour stuff, you're probably not going to like it. Sorry. But this one's the blue one. So it's like the blue Sour Patch Kid, which is anybody who's ever had Sour Patch, in my humble opinion, the blue one is the best one. So very, very excited to try that tomorrow morning. So hopefully this goes up on Friday. So by Saturday, it'll be on there. And if if you can't catch it by then, it'll be on my highlights forever. So, or until it gets deleted to make space for something else. So be sure to check that out. Oh. Also, I hope you guys caught it last week, but I'm going to keep the weekend workout coming. So I'm going to be filming that today. I just sent out the recipe this morning and it, it made me so hungry. <laughs> like I, I try and find good recipes and that are packed with protein and they're usually like they look better than normal but this one I was like whoa <laughs> this is a cheeseburger casserole any burger anything I'm like yes please so very very excited to try this one and the calories are surprisingly good very high in protein like I think it was 25 or 28 grams of protein per serving and the carbs on it were really low because it's really just meat and cheese so it's not that bad and then if you're using like lower fat cheese the fat content really isn't that bad either so it's protein packed it's moderate calories like this thing will make for a really tasty lunch especially if you throw on some like sugar free ketchup that shit will be fire <laughs> but throw uh, we'll throw it in the oven and we'll get that workout in. Hopefully you guys will join me. Okay, now on to today's topic. The topic this week is going to be rest. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's not a sexy topic. Nobody really likes talking about it, but lately it just seems very important. Now with the weather getting better, people are a little bit more gung-ho about their fitness. They want to get those results in time for summer. Oh boy, yellow means slow not speed got to remember um yeah so now we're in that home stretch to summer and now everybody's trying to get on their fitness whoop oopsie i definitely did not just run a red light definitely did not okay sorry about that guys now we're going to talk about rest timing okay when it comes to rest timing we want to make sure that we're using it for the right purposes. Okay, it's a little bit different based on cardio and strength and all that other jazz. But in a nutshell, we want to make sure that we rest enough to get the best results possible in the gym. Okay, the name of the game when it comes to fat loss or strength gain or any of that is having the best workouts possible. Okay, that means we're getting stronger, we're getting the adaptations that we're going after. Jeez, it is windy. Yikes. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> okay, we're going after adaptation in the gym. And now, if we're just going in day after day, sweating like crazy, killing ourselves, and it's the same thing over and over and over again, and we're not seeing results, it could be because you're not resting enough. Now, when, you're, when it comes to rest times, there's a very simple test you can do. Like, there's a lot of people that, like, Joel Jameson comes to mind. He's very into uh, heart rate variability and, like, all the recovery that's around that. There's a bunch of other people that will be able to go down into the weeds and explain the intricacies of rest timing and what it provides. But in a nutshell, when we're working out, it's almost like if you've ever played the NFL Blitz game or if you've ever played... Uh, any sort of game with like a turbo feature, 
Okay, when you hit that turbo button, it drains. Okay, that's like us working out. When we're working out, we're draining the fuel source. Okay, then when you take that rest break, it fills that meter back up so you can go turbo again and be at your best. Now, anybody who's played NFL Blitz, when that turbo drains, all of a sudden your guy starts running really, really slow and then can get caught by anybody else. Okay, that's like if you were to hold down that turbo button for your entire workout, you're just going to be going slow the whole time. No touchdowns are going to be made, and you're going to get tackled like crazy, and you're going to feel like shit. Okay? So when it comes to how long you should rest to fill that meter back up, you could do the traditional, like, when it comes to strength training. You want anywhere from... <laughs> I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass. I, I am certified strength and conditioning coach, I swear to God, but the numbers are not fresh, but it you can get away with anywhere from one to two minutes rest in between sets, okay, that will get you very replenished, ready to go for the next set, and make you perform at your best when it comes to like muscle building, hypertrophy, all that good stuff. Now, if you're doing strength stuff, if you're on the lower end of the reps and the higher end on the weight, you're going to need a little more rest, okay, your CNS your central nervous system takes a little bit longer to regenerate than your muscles do. Okay, when it comes to your CNS, you want somewhere around like three to five minutes. Okay, three on the low end, five on the high end, or you could go full Bulgarian mode. Okay, for anybody who's familiar with the Bulgarian training system, their guys used to rest. I think it was like ten minutes in between sets. I don't know how long their workouts took, but Jesus Christ, that's long. So. For the average person, you can get away with one to two minutes. But one method that's even better than that, and it's it accounts for your individual level of conditioning, is the talk test. Now, I recently listened to a really good podcast on Squat University. He he had uh, on Brett Jones. Okay, for those of you that don't know, Brett Jones is one of the guys that created the FMS with Gray Cook. That's the functional movement screen, but he's also really, really big on kettlebells okay, and kettlebell training. Now, he's very, very, very knowledgeable on a ton of different training aspects, and one of the things he dove in on was this concept of the, um, the talk test. So basically, if you're doing a workout, say you're doing an exercise or two, okay, you do first one, second one, and then it's your rest. That rest should last as long as it takes you to be able to have a conversation with somebody else. So if I'm your trainer and I'm standing right next to you, you're huffing and puffing, don't do that next set yet. When you can have a conversation with me without breaking to go, okay, that's when you hop on your next set. But at the same time, you don't want to take so much rest that you're 100% fresh. Because at, at that point, you're a little bit too fresh and you're not going to get as much of a bang for your buck and it's going to take you a lot longer in the gym and you're going to be, yeah, sorry, you're not going to get as much bang for your buck in a nutshell because when you let yourself rest so much, then you're losing a little bit of that conditioning aspect. So you can keep a gauge of it. Like if you have a training partner and you guys are talking back and forth, keep each other in check. Like if you finish your set and they're like still breathing heavy, be like, bro, chill, chill, relax, woosa, okay, relax. And then as soon as they're good to go and you guys are having a full on conversation, be like, all right, it's go time. Okay. Or ladies, if you're like at a class or if you're in the gym together with your girl, with your girlfriend, okay, same thing. Okay. In between conversations, keep tabs on each other, feel it out. Let let your partner know, okay, oh, it sounds like you're not quite there yet, rest about 10 more seconds, 20 more seconds, okay, that's going to allow them to be stronger, okay, you to be stronger, and it's going to get you way more adaptation as far as cardiovascular health, because one of the best indicators of cardiovascular fitness is not just how much work you can put out, like how many miles you can run, how many meters you can do on the rower. It's how quick your heart can recover between sets. So if you go in day one of the gym and you're working out hard and you just can't catch your breath the entire time, but then you come in the next time and you're able to recover a little bit more in between sets, okay, you're getting, you're doing that talk test and it's taking you less time to get to that point where you can move on to that next set being 
pretty fresh, okay, that's a sign that your heart is a little bit healthier each week. Okay, your cardiovascular fitness is getting progressively better. Keep tabs on that. That's one way that we can track progress that isn't necessarily weight, but it's really, really good for overall health. So that's pretty much it when it comes to rest timing that I'm going to go into. Do the talk test. Keep yourself in check in the gym and do it for your partner, your gym partner, or whoever. If you see somebody struggling, like tell them about the talk test. <laughs> okay? Don't, don't be that weirdo in the gym just striking up conversation to random people, but you see somebody struggling who's a newbie feel free to pass on the good info okay i hope you guys got a little something out of this if you have any questions as far as rest timing or if you want have questions on the protein stuff we talked about earlier feel free to shoot me an email at coachfits1 at gmail.com hope you guys have an amazing week i will see you next time